Hey, this is Dave from the Character Animator team, and today I am extremely excited to announce the latest release of Adobe Character Animator CC Beta. It's out right now, you can download it as we speak. And this video is going to showcase some of the coolest new features that have been added in this release, including the walk behavior. Now your characters can walk, run, strut, prance, and whatever else you want uh, with all the custom parameters. So we'll go through the process of rigging one of our example characters here, so you can use that as a guide for getting your own characters to move. Then one of the biggest usability improvements in this release is the addition of workspaces. So now whether you're rigging a puppet or recording something in the timeline or doing a live stream, we've got a workspace for you. And so I'll show how that uh, all works. Then Vizim editing. So now when you bring in a talk track or your character is, is speaking, uh, that talk track is going to show every Vizim, every mouth shape in the timeline. And you can edit those, delete them, trim them, swap them, add in new ones, whatever you want. Uh, makes frame by frame precise lip sync very quick and easy. And I'll go through the process of doing that with the character as well. Then, Mercury Transmit Support. This opens up the door to a number of awesome live streaming uh, animation possibilities, including making it a lot easier to have two characters talking to each other if you have two computers with Character Animator, uh, linking them up together, and alpha channels on Windows. So no more green screen for, for Windows users. Now uh, this uh, enables uh, that sort of transparency support. So that's fantastic. And then I'll walk through a ton of uh, smaller but cool features, including blend mode support. Uh, so all of those effects you can add and you know and love from Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, the Nutcracker jaw now has rotation and amplitude uh, possibilities and a lot of other new cool features. So that's a lot to go through, so let's get started. The walk behavior is a great new addition to Character Animator. I've tried to make walk cycles uh, before in the past and they end up looking terrible. I don't know what I'm doing. I, you know, it never looks natural, never, never looks nice. Uh, here, I just tag a few body parts and within a matter of minutes, I've got a walking or running or strutting or whatever type of character and whatever type of personality I want. Uh, so this is a character, an example I made called Walkbot, and he's uh, free and packed in with the app actually, so you can uh, tear him apart and learn from him and do whatever you want with him. Uh, but let's go into the puppet panel and learn a little bit more about how you would set this up for walking. Okay, so we're rigging our character now, and I've removed all the pre-existing walk rigging uh, for this guy so we can go through it step by step and I'll show you how it's done. But a couple things to note first. Number one, See this guy is facing sideways in a profile view, and that's really what we recommend for the best walk uh, behavior results. Now you can also have front views and three quarter views and things like that, but and I'll show you how to cycle between those in a little bit, but for now, for w the actual walking, uh, you want your character to be in the side view, and that'll give you the best results. The second thing is you want all of your limbs to be independent and uh, stapled independent parts. So the arms, the legs, um, you wanna make sure that they are on their own group, uh, they have the independent crown here, or the plus uh, symbol in Photoshop or Illustrator, which means they'll that means they can move on their own uh, without warping or pulling the rest of the character. And for attach style for these, I usually like hinge the best. You can play with weld and that looks okay, but I think hinge looks the best for the walk behavior. And then finally, you want to make sure they're stapled. So I would take the staple icon down here and just staple it where it connects to the actual uh, body. So in this case, I would want my arm to connect at the shoulder, and so I would add a staple there. Okay, so to get started, I'll make sure my top level walkbot puppet is selected. And by default, when you import something into Character Animator, it's gonna get these default behaviors like eye gaze, face, keyboard triggers, all that stuff. But I'm gonna click the plus icon up here and add the walk behavior. And this gives them the special power, the ability to now walk. But it's not gonna work automatically. I have to identify and tag the key parts, the body parts that I want the walk behavior to influence. And actually, if I twirl down handles here, I'll see all the potential things that I could tag, ankle, heel, toe, uh, neck, waist, all of these different things. So let's uh, select the body group of my character to start with and I'm going to select the handle tool down here and that's this little circle icon and that's basically going to make allow me to make these blank uh, invisible data points that uh, I can tag as certain body parts for my character. So for this first one I'm going to find where the you know around where the belly button would be and go right in the middle of my character and put one here for like basically his waistline 
and I'm going to now click the corresponding tag that shows up over here in my new visual tags area and tag that as waste. And you'll see now that this shows up as a handle called waste. Below that, probably where I want the legs to connect to the, uh, you know, where they would connect to the hips basically, I'll make another icon, another handle there, and I'll tag that as the hip. And basically all I'm doing is making these little invisible data points that are uh, saying, hey, this is my character's waist, this is my character's hip. And then one last thing I'm gonna do before doing a quick preview is I'm gonna select the whole head group and instead of making uh, a new handle here, I'm just gonna scroll down and tag the whole head as the neck. And that means the head is going to bob with the walking animation. So let's go to a scene now and see how this looks. And so, uh, this looks a little weird right now, but already you can start to see that something is happening with my character. I've added these things, and because I have the walk behavior, and I have it already starting to move, uh, my character is kind of jumping up and down and starting some animation already. So let's go back to rigging and add a few more things. Alright, so let's start with one of the legs. I'm going to go to the right leg here, and select that handle tool one more time, and right where the knee would be, I'm going to create a handle and tag it as the right knee. I'm gonna do this exact same thing for the ankle and the heel and the toe. And now let's go back to our scene and see how that's looking. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now he's looking like a, he's skateboarding or something like that. He's got one leg moving. Um, so we're starting to get there and we can just do the exact same thing now that we are, uh, did with this leg for the other leg and the two arms. All right, so back to rigging, let's do this again. So the left leg, now the left leg is currently kind of hidden by the rest of the character. So actually, if I double click it, I'll go into an isolated view, and this makes it a little bit easier to uh, see exactly what you're doing. So let's click this and add a handle and make that the left knee and left ankle, left heel, and left toe. And to go back to my main area, I'll just press Command W uh, on Mac, and that's uh, Control W on Windows. And so now I've got my parts all there. I'm going to do the same thing for the arms. So let's start with the right arm. I'm going to tag where the elbow would be, and tag that as right elbow, and where the wrist would be, and tag that as right wrist. And then for the left arm, let's do the same double click to get into the isolated mode, and do left elbow and left wrist and again I will press command W or uh, on Mac or control W on Windows to get back and now our character is walking so now uh, everything is looking pretty good now I can of course go back if I don't like how you know it's particularly bending um, I can add some more sticks in the character so for example for the legs I might want to do something like uh, you know go here and add a stick where I want kind of that these you know, basic, basic bone structure to be for this character and I can do that for each limb if I wanted to. So I added some sticks and that gives them a little bit more uh, rigid structure there. Now the walk behavior has a ton of custom parameters that determine uh, not only how your character is moving but also how you control that walking uh, movement as well. So start by default is set to immediately here but I can change that to left and right arrow keys. And if I do that, then the character will stop by default, but then if I press the right arrow key on my keyboard, he will start walking. And if I press left, it would do kind of a backwards walk. Now, if I don't want my character to stay in place, I can actually scroll down to body speed, change that to 100%, and then if I press left and right now, the character will walk directly off the screen. So if I'm pressing uh, the right arrows and left arrows, and the nice thing about this is, there will be no foot sliding. By default, if you rig your character like we just showed and you set things to 100%, your character will walk across the stage, uh, the scene, without any kind of ice skating or foot sliding or anything like that, which is uh, really, really nice and, and makes things a lot easier. Now, some of these other parameters are fun to play around with, and for every character, you're probably gonna wanna try them out and see what's gonna look best for the personality of how you want your character to move. So for example, the style here is by default set to walk, but if I change that to a prance, he'll kind of get a little bit more swagger in his step and look kind of a little more confident there. 
and then uh, you know run animation. Uh, you've got a bunch of different options as kind of what is your starting point um, of how you want your character to be looking for that movement. And then a lot of other options here you can change. Stride length, if I move that up or down, he's gonna you know, make his stride wider or, uh, or shorter. Um, step speed is how fast he's going to be walking. Uh, you can play around with that. Uh, a lot of arm controls over here, so arm swing, uh, that's going to show how much, so if you really want his arms to swing like that, you can bring that up or bring that down for a little arm swing. Uh, arm angle is nice if you want like a zombie character, you know you can kind of have him putting his arms out, I want to eat your brains or something like that. Uh, you have the ability to do that, as well as elbow bend, and that'll kind of have the angle of where you want your elbows to be bending. Now here's another character, this is Maddie and uh, she was created by Athena Studios in Emeryville and I was lucky enough to be on set when they actually uh, shot her and uh, all of her different parts and uh, she's got all these like customizable face plates that you could take off and it was just an awesome uh, experience but they basically shot her in front of a green screen and then took pictures of all the different parts and positions for her and then stitched it all uh, together in Photoshop to create the puppet that you see here. Now the cool thing about Maddie is uh, actually if I press left she will walk to the left and if I press right she walks to the right and she changes her view depending on what I'm doing. So if I'm not pressing anything she stops and stays still but if I press right she moves to the right if I stop she'll stop and then press left and she moves to the left. So let's go into the rigging and see how this was done. So you've got a few options for character setup for the walk behavior. By default, uh, you know, as I showed with the walk bot example, he just basically had one view, and uh, it's just going to work as you would expect. You know, when you press the left or right arrow keys, he'll move to the left or the right. Um, when you stop, he'll just stop. But he's not going to switch between different views. Maddie, uh, by contrast, is actually has three different views. She's got frontal, and a right profile view and a left profile view. And each of these has, uh, you know, its own rigged head and body. Uh, so you'll see, you know, all the arms and feet and all that, that stuff has been tagged in each of these views. Um, and what's gonna happen then is the walk behavior is basically looking for these left and right profile views. So make sure you tag those uh, over here. So here's the left profile and the right profile. And all it's going to do is say, okay, if you press the right arrow key, show the right profile artwork. If you press the left arrow key, show the left profile artwork. And if you're not pressing anything, show whatever else is here. So it doesn't necessarily have to be tagged frontal. I did that just for clarity, but um, that's just your, you know, your extra standing still view, basically. But taking the time to add those views really makes for a uh, responsive character. So I might be doing a live stream, for example, and I've got my character, you know, talking to the audience, and maybe she starts, you know, pacing back and forth um, and talk while she talks, and you know, moves this way or that way. Um, it's very fun. It's almost like a video game character, actually. It's 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 fun to control. So um, hopefully, this gives you a, a quick introduction to adding walk movement to your characters in Character Animator, and I can't wait to see. Uh, what you guys come up with with this new feature. We've done a lot of usability testing with Character Animator and one thing we've realized is that uh, we can't just throw one interface out there uh, with a ton of text and buttons and stuff like that and expect it to solve every part of the workflow. Uh, it just gets really crowded and unapproachable and um, not as friendly as and clear as it could be, particularly to new users. So what we've done is separated things into the most common parts of the workflow uh, for people creating and animating and streaming uh, characters in Character Animator. So you'll notice at the top here, we now have this uh, workspace bar and it says start, rig, record, and stream. And this may look familiar, you may have seen this pop up in places like Premiere Pro and After Effects, uh, but we've got our own version now as well. So let's walk through these and see what they each do. So first I'm gonna go over here and click start. And this is the first thing you'll see when you open up the app. So we've still got the Doc, Dr. Funkenstein and Andrew the Pizza Delivery Boy uh, interactive tutorial. And we still say this is the best place to start if you've never used Character Animator before. Uh, video tutorials will take you to our video page, which has all our video tutorials and tips and tricks episodes and all of that good stuff. And then remember we used to have that blue guy, Stanny, that was kind of a default uh, Photoshop and Illustrator file. But uh, what we learned from you guys is that uh, you wanted more puppets and different body types and showing off different parts of uh, the app's functionality. And so what we've done is included these four template characters that show off uh, a few different features in Character Animator. So 
Your default character here, Chloe, she's got Photoshop and Illustrator versions. And if you click on her, it's going to open her uh, up as a new puppet, a new scene, and also open that file up as in Photoshop or Illustrator so you can see exactly how she was put together. Uh, then Wendigo uh, is a snow creature that has uh, head turns and a breathe behavior associated with him. Finn is a big uh, floating fish with uh, dangling fins, and if you press the Z key, he actually turns and puffs up and gets a big, you know, puffer fish type thing and completely changes his uh, his body type. So it's kind of like a puppet swap that shows you. And then finally, Walkbot, who I just went over in the uh, the previous section, um, you've got him here as well. And if you go up to Red Monster here and make him wink and uh, click on him, he will take you to our official examples page where we've got a ton more free downloadable examples uh, to check out, many of which we've shown in previous tutorial videos uh, before. Now, I should also mention that I've redesigned uh, my OK Samurai puppet pack uh, and put it all together in one uh, nice, easy page. And it includes a bunch of new characters uh, that are showing off the walk behavior and a few other things. So um, it might be worth checking that out as well. So hopefully that's a good starting experience. Let's move over to the rig workspace by clicking on that. And uh, basically what we're trying to do here is just give you as much space as possible to see your artwork as big and beautiful as possible and uh, give you a lot of space and tools for rigging operations. So uh, you'll notice we've gotten rid of the timeline down here, the camera in the upper right corner, and we're really focusing on giving you as much room for all the things you need for the rigging process. Now note we've also added the history panel down here which shows you every step uh, you've ever taken with this puppet. We save all that automatically and you can go back at any time. I found this extremely handy uh, with the rigging process so I can always feel like I can experiment and try new things and if it doesn't work out I can always go back in my history uh, panel. Now that's always been there, it's always been hidden but we decided to bring it out because uh, it's, it feels extremely helpful. Now moving on to the record workspace, uh, this is pretty much how Character Animator has always looked, uh, this, this basic uh, layout, uh, except the history we've added that uh, as well over here on the left hand side. Now one thing you'll have to get used to is before we had the puppet and the scene here as tabs that you could switch between. Um, what we've done now is make switching uh, for puppets will always show up in rig mode and scenes will always show up by default in record mode. Um, so the interface is always optimized for whatever you're doing. So what we would recommend is when you're moving back and forth between these two is to use either the toolbar at the top to go between rig and record or when you click on a puppet over here, for example, if I click on Evans one and double click him, that's gonna automatically take me to the rig mode. And likewise, if I click, double click on the scene, that will automatically open up record mode. So we're trying to optimize things to whatever file you're working with, whatever you're using, um, we're trying to switch to the workspace that best represents that. And the last one is the stream workspace. And this is what you would use if you were uh, live streaming uh, something on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, that sort of thing. Uh, the timeline has been condensed, so it's still over here, but a couple things to note. Uh, so you can select whichever character, so you have the multiple characters down here, you can still select which one you want to control. Uh, but then uh, notice that the play controls and record controls are missing down here, so you won't accidentally press spacebar or record or something like that in the middle of a broadcast and play something back. Um, so it's been you know just optimized for that view, and if you're a live streamer or you're making puppets for people who are doing live streaming, uh, all they have to do is focus on the streaming workspace and not even worry about rig and record um, and they they should be all set now you can of course make your own workspaces if you want to if none of these three feel like they're the right fit uh, you can customize and make your own so if I click this little uh, menu icon here and go to save as new workspace and let's call this walk rig that's going to add a new workspace to my bar up here and then if I want to add new panels or move these around I can do that so if I go to window puppet that will add my puppet panel here. And then I have total uh, flexibility. I can move this you know, to the side or something like that. Uh, maybe I wanna get rid of my project panel, so I'll get rid of that. Uh, let's move this down here, something like that. And then you know, I've got the, the possibility to create all these different uh, layouts and save them up here. So if I wanted to, for example, rig my character for walking and then see him walk in real time as I start doing that, uh, I have the ability to set up a workspace for that sort of thing as well. Uh, so we're trying to give you the most flexibility here and optimize the user interface for uh, your workflows. 
so hopefully this this helps a lot and, and makes uh, life a little bit easier uh, when you're rigging, recording, and streaming characters. This is one you guys have been asking for for a while. Uh, lip sync Vizim editing for recorded performances uh, with your character. So, um, you know, by default, Character Animator is listening to your voice and is trying to match the sounds that you're saying, uh, all that stuff, with uh, a mouse shape that you've provided in your Photoshop or Illustrator file. But sometimes, let's face it, mistakes are going to happen, or maybe you want to change something for a stylistic reason. Uh, but now you have the ability to edit and fine tune those so you'll get precise lip sync on every frame. I'll show you what I mean. So here's Aquavel the alien, and I'm going to record a very short performance with him. Uh, hi, I'm Aquavel the alien, and I really like ice cream. Oscar worthy as usual. So uh, if I drag the CTI, the current time indicator, back here, and then zoom in on the timeline, Look what's happening. Now, I also have, in addition to my take tracks that I've done, I have uh, individual uh, bars for every vizim, every mouse shape and sound that I've said that has uh, you know, been part of this performance. And what I would recommend is if you are editing lip sync, uh, I would turn off your microphone so that way your current talking doesn't pollute what you're seeing down there. Uh, and if I drag now, look what I can see. I see every mouse shape exactly when it happens and the gaps indicate when no talking is happening. And it makes it really easy to kind of visualize all the different phonetic sounds, all the different shapes that uh, I'm, I'm showing at any given time. Now, if I zoom in a little closer, you'll start to see this, this blue highlight area and this, uh, um, this little dotted line. Basically, the dotted line is exactly what is being read uh, for that the frame at any given time. So, you know, because we have different frame rates or you can, you know, change and, and move things anywhere, things might not always line up on frame 000 or, you know, frame three. Um, so wherever the dotted line is, that's exactly when things take over. So notice right now I'm showing the uh. mouth, but as soon as that dotted line goes over to the D mouth, then that shows up. Same thing with the A uh mouth over here. So that's really when you get doing this precise editing, look at that dotted line, that is precisely where you want to uh, make your edits and, and trims to. So speaking of editing, uh, I can select any of these shapes by clicking on it, and then I can drag it to determine you know, where it begins or ends. So if I want that ah shape to show up a little bit later, I can do that and notice how the mouth uh, started to take over, the D mouth uh, in front of it started to take over, and now it's the ah mouth. And I can also delete them. Now notice this, when I select the ah uh, and press delete, it doesn't create a gap there. And the reason is because when we did usability studies, we realized people didn't want to, when they were deleting something in the middle of uh, talking, they didn't want all these gaps that they had to fill. Typically when you're talking, your, converse, you know, your mouth is continually moving and you don't need to have all these gaps. So by default, what we do is expand uh, its neighbor vizim to uh, connect with uh, and fill in that gap. However, if I wanted to, let me just undo that. If I wanted to uh, change that to a gap, I can just right click it and go down here to silence and that's going to create a gap instead. Now the right click menu is also the way you can swap vizims in and out. So for example, if I click this D, and I uh, actually let's scroll over here, and if I say, ah, the D mouth is really not what I wanted, I had a D over here already. This, you know, what I'm saying right now sounds more like an O, I can select that and it will change to the O mouth instead. We also have uh, just some suggestions for specific sounds that may be the best for these mouth shapes. So if you have a ch, j, sh, z sound, maybe the S shape is the best one to take and so on and so on. We're just trying to help uh, guide you to do the best lip sync possible. But it's all up to you. You can just you know go about it however you want. All right, so let's do some quick editing here and see how this goes. Let's take a look. So already this, this part right here, I can see this R kind of takes over and I don't want that so I'm just going to select that and delete it and that's going to look a little bit smoother. So there with alien I noticed there's like a part here where it should go to an E right it should say alien and I don't know it might be I wasn't close enough to the microphone or I'm doing a weird voice sometimes that can create stuff but um, one thing I could do is hold down option uh, and that's option on Mac or Alt on uh, Windows, and that gives me a little razor blade icon. And if I click now, that's going to split and give me uh, another new vizim there in that area. So I can right click this, change it to the E, 
and then that's going to look a little bit nicer. I can also do, of course, slow motion playback to see how things look that way. All right, that looks pretty good. And then if you wanna add a, a new Vizim into a blank space, just right click into that blank area and select your Vizim and it will show up there. So that's a quick overview of the Vizim editing uh, process in the latest version. Uh, I think this is going to make recorded pieces look a lot better. It gives you much more control, uh, much more precision, much more insight into how your mouths are working and what sounds character animator is using at any given time. Um, so I'm starting to use this feature a lot. It's, it's great and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. One of the most popular and uh, most fun things to do in Character Animator is of course the live streaming. It's just fun to be a monster or cartoon character and then uh, send yourself out to the rest of the world on YouTube or Facebook Live or uh, Twitch or broadcast television as we've seen with The Simpsons and The Late Show with Stephen Colbert among others. Um, but what we've done with this latest release is expanded the options and giving you more ways to stream your animated uh, cartoon scenes to other places and devices and plugins. So check this out down here. I'm in the stream workspace right now and I've got this new little icon that I can toggle on and off for uh, opening up streaming, basically this enables streaming or not. And if I roll over it here, it says stream live, display scene on active devices, but it tells me no devices are currently connected. And it tells me I can command click, that's on Mac, uh, it's control click on Windows, to change active devices. So that's what I'm gonna do. And that's basically a shortcut to the preferences uh, menu. So I could do the same thing by going up here, character animator preferences. But you'll notice we've got this new section, live output. Um, and here we've got enable Mercury Transmit and Siphon. Mercury Transmit is the name of the technology behind this. So you always want this checked. And Siphon is the existing technology we had uh, that works on the Mac. Uh, and then you've got different video devi devices that you can choose down here. So it's gonna uh, look for any plugins or connected devices or anything like that um, to, uh, to help you with. So for example, um, I've got my Adobe Monitor 1. I've got two monitors here right now. And if I click on this and hit OK, then what's going to happen is as I'm talking here, uh, I've got a two monitor setup and the other monitor is going to show a large full screen chromeless version of uh, my character and my performance. Now if I had a background, it would show up there uh, as well. So this is a great way to send things to, uh, you know, if you're in a lobby or an interactive display or you're doing a stand-up comedy show or, uh, you know, you wanna show something in a physical space, uh, this is a really great way to do it, uh, to connect another external display and be able to project it up there. But that's not all. So we also have support for Nutex NDI plugin. So if I check that and uh, make sure that disable Mercury Transmit output is uh, unchecked because you do want Character Animator to be able to run in the background uh, if you're doing this sort of thing, uh, click OK. And then this will allow me to send this signal, these, this video that I'm doing uh, with an alpha channel to other things that support Nutex NDI plugin, which there's a lot of applications out there that will do that. And one of those applications is Telestream's Wirecast. Uh, this is a great application for getting your stuff out there to the rest of the world on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, broadcast television, whatever. So uh, right now I've got a few sources that I've put in here, uh, my live laptop camera, uh, as well as just a background night image. And because I have NDI enabled in Character Animator, if I go to Capture Devices, look what's showing up here. Character Animator, uh, Adobe Character Animator, Dave Warner Local, that's me. And if I click on that, now my Character Animator scene is showing up with full alpha support. And so that's not as apparent in this scene, but it will be here because I can now move my character around and uh, have a conversation with myself basically as a cartoon character. So that's, that's pretty fun. Um, so what this allows you to do is layer multiple sources, video sources or things coming, uh, your character animator character with uh, whatever you want. So um, you could do your own talk show. You could do your own uh, video Q&A uh, with, with other people. Actually with NDI you can, and Wirecast, you can connect via an ethernet cable two computers that are both running character animator and you could see that show up as a source here in Wirecast and basically have a two character uh, setup where they're talking to each other. Um, makes it really easy to do that. Before you needed a lot of equipment and wires uh, to do that. This time you only need one. We feel like the more options we give you guys for doing cool stuff with live streaming, the more cool stuff you guys will make and uh, that's 
that's why we did it. So hopefully this helps open up the doors to a lot of new creative possibilities and uh, looking forward to watching what you guys create. All right, so we're gonna finish today with a quick hit list of some of the other cool features that are packed in. I'm not gonna be able to get through all the new stuff that's in. There's notes online somewhere uh, for that. But uh, some of the coolest new things that I've, I've enjoyed are uh, blend modes. So you'll notice, for example, I've got this blue uh, glow layer for this character here. And uh, if I go under my layer properties on the right, notice that now I have blend mode support. So the nice thing about this is it's you know the same blend modes that you've seen in Photoshop or Illustrator or uh, elsewhere, but now you've got them in real time uh, for live animation as well. My personal favorite is always linear dodge uh, add mode because that always makes it kind of have this nice glow effect. Uh, you can also duplicate it, you know, multiple times uh, to get, you know, even a nicer, uh, brighter glow. Um, so this just opens up a number of creative possibilities so your characters don't, you know, have to feel as flat. Uh, shadows, highlights, glows, that sort of stuff. Uh, you can make things blend in in a lot of really interesting ways. So that's a fun one to experiment with. So we've had the nutcracker jaw uh, as a possible behavior uh, in the past. And if you add this and have something tagged jaw, then that jaw uh, layer is going to move with your own jaw in the webcam. And in the past, it's just moved up and down. But you'll notice with Walkbot here, his is actually pivoting, uh, almost like it was a beak for a bird or something like that. And so uh, this is a new option you have. So under Nutcracker Jaw, you will see now under Movement, you have Position, which is the old way we had it, as well as Rotation Clockwise and Rotation Counterclockwise, giving you ability to make these kind of pivoting mouths. So for this guy, uh, I did Rotation Clockwise, I made it independent, and I stapled it uh, to the rest of the head, and that allows it to pivot uh, in this way. Now we've also got another option here. So camera flappiness is the way it's always worked in the past, and that means it's actually gonna flap and move based on my own jawline. So as my jaw moves up and down, the same thing is happening to the character. However, we also have an audio flappiness version, and that uh, is determined by the volume of the audio input uh, coming in. So if you do a really loud sound, that means the jaw could get really wide or really big or go down really far. Um, and it's a really nice way to control. So we give you both options. Uh, by default, those are both set here to 100%, but you can play around with them and see what works best for you and your particular character. We've also made tags easier to see in the puppet panel. So before, um, these tags, mouth and mouth group, these were really small and hard to see. Now we've made them bigger and brighter and they should match the tags visualization that you see over here on the right side if you're doing the text-based tags. So remember, yellow tags are for handles. Those are the little circles, the invisible data points that we're using to get information from. And blue is for uh, layer tags, basically tags uh, relating to the artwork or groups that you've added into your character. And uh, you really don't have to worry about that that much. Just know that tags are a little bit bigger and brighter and easier to read. All right, so that's a quick overview at some of the coolest new features that have been added into this release. I uh, can't wait to see what you guys make from it. And uh, of course, we'll be going into much more depth and giving you some pointers uh, in future tutorials and tips and tricks episodes. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, but that's it for today. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns or bug reports or feature requests or anything like that with the new release, please tell us at the official Adobe forums and we'll be happy to help you out. But that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and have fun.